The Last of Us is one of the most critically acclaimed video games of all time. Its brilliant narrative and accompanying gameplay and how its mechanics and level designs complements its world build and overall aesthetic to the degree the game has been cemented into the history books as the turn for narrative driven games. And to some respects it steered the gaming industry in a whole new direction. So obviously as a huge fan of The Last of Us much like yourselves, you must wonder much like I do, why is it that the company in multiplayer or Factions MP didn't get just as much praise when it's such an amazing multiplayer. In fact, I would even argue that it's one of the best multiplayers of all time, much like the story mode. We're going to be looking into that today, and we're going to be breaking down, of course, the Factions MP, and we're going to be painting a vivid picture to people who probably have never played The Last of Us Factions MP, and of course, I'm going to be hopefully representing what the game means to people who have played Factions MP, and the people who still play it now. As the game has retained some level of, of course, recurring fans or recurring players, I feel like The Last of Us Factions MP has the potential to be just as big as something like CSGO or even bigger I know that's a huge thing to say because CSGO has been around for like a decade uh, if not more and of course games like Call of Duty and things like that they'll always be like at the top when it comes to sales but the Last of Us Factions MP is something that should have blown up in my personal opinion and if you agree I hope this video shares the same amount of information and thoughts to new people and newcomers as much as you would like to have it shown off to them. All right, there's scavengers in the area. Stick close and keep an eye out. Copy. In recent years, the market of games shipping with multiplayer components have all geared towards the first person shooter style akin to Call of Duty, and this was especially true back in 2013. So, of course, when a game like The Last of Us brings in something new and special, it went over people's heads. Even though roughly 7 million people bought the game after its critical success, or of course, its success in the hands of reviewers and YouTubers, 7 million people wound up purchasing the game. Factions MP multiplayer never saw anything close to the amount of success or acclaim the story did, however, and with the facts out of the way, we can move into my analysis of the multiplayer and then close off strong with my thoughts on the sheer missed opportunity to see what could have been probably a fundamental shift not only in story um, in games but also a fundamental shift when it came to multiplayer in video games as the multiplayer truly is a masterpiece much like the campaign In Factions MP, your purpose of playing is to earn resources and materials for your camp. You would choose a side, fireflies or hunters, then be dropped into play sessions with fellow compatriots of the side you chose. During these matches, you will kill and be killed for the in-game resources you're trying to acquire to keep your people alive for 12 weeks until reinforcements show up. In a way, this multiplayer isn't just an afterthought by Naughty Dog to try and get recurring players. Everything in this experience and the camp structure means something. It has a tangible value in a way I can't even entirely explain myself. You get no look at your camp or the people residing in it. All you know is that you're, it's your camp. And as you start things off, it'll be smooth sailing. Your people will find new people. All will be good. I'd say on average for about the first two to three weeks. And then it happens. Someone that your, someone that your people found had an illness that starts to spread so now your camp needs medicine and other supplies or the opposing faction has been seen around your campgrounds so you as the player are issued a challenge and of course if you complete this challenge or this objective you reduce the eliminations of the people in your camp this means that your camp's numbers can actually be dropped and this is how I believe that the game has actually tricked someone like me and many other players to worry about this camp system you never see people just in this game loafing around like you see in Call of Duty you never see See people trying to run around and just teabag or fuck around now you do have those lobbies and stuff to where maybe you're playing with a group of people and they won't take the game too seriously but if you don't then of course you'll always see people going ham and the level 
of, of course, interaction that goes between you as the player and this camp is just so crazy. Like, they have this whole intricate system set up to where it's like the game understands what crisis needs to befall your camp at what certain time. So it'll be something like, of course, 75% losses at your camp if you don't complete this challenge. And it also has these different objectives that are set up that you choose once the challenges are initiated. And you can really break these down too. And it all just revolves around the skills that you have as a player. For instance, I'm good with Molotovs, bombs, snipers, uh, the bow and arrow, of course, the automatic pistol. I'm good with um, the whole AK in the game. I think it's an AK. The AK in the game, the sniper in the game, and there's something there for each individual to actually take up. There is no objectives that set or there isn't no set objectives for these challenges. These challenges gives you complete free reign of how you want to handle them. So if you're challenged to a 100% drop of your camp, you can choose something that you know that you're personally good at that will allow you to rescue your camp entirely. If you want to do something that actually involves you like, you know, um, doing something with Molotovs and things like that, you have that option. It isn't just set to how many kills you get or it isn't set to pop in so many people's heads off. Now, there are some that say that to where you do have to get headshots, but they aren't necessarily set to that. If you understand what I'm trying to say, then you know I'm trying to say that there isn't nothing that forces you to do anything in the game. You always have the option to play the way you want to play. And nine times out of ten, the game is more so based around resources anyways. Unless it says 100% losses, then of course you will be able to recover from it as well. So unless it says 100%, the game doesn't unfairly try and wipe everything that you've built away. I'm here. Ah! Inside of The Last of Us Factions MP, the experience and the amount of fun you'll have is determined solely on you as the player, and how well you think with your brain rather than being able to run across the map. Remember the stealth in the campaign? Well, that's just as important here. Remember the ability to manage resources you picked up on playing the story? That's also here. Remember when Tess said, make every bullet count? That's also a factor here. Remember when the crafting in the campaign? That's here too. But the sheer inclusion of these concepts and ideas are not what makes the game play or defines this multiplayer. It's you, yourself, that defines this experience and how much fun you will have playing it. These elements, from the listenability to the very gun your character carries, is nothing more than a tool at your disposal. Hell, you don't even need a primary. I've run many pistol sets for agility and mobility and played scout for my teams. The game didn't arbitrarily assign me this role either. I built the class personally to suit what I wanted to play, and if I wanted to play Scout, I built it around a pistol. If I have a sniper class that's based on quietly traversing the map and setting up shop at high points and vantage points, and there's so many spaces and there's so many places to camp fill that sniper role, contrary to Call of Duty though, where there's three spots to camp and everyone's fighting for one of the best spots and stuff on the map. It's like these little spots are littered all over the map. There is no set places for you to do this in. And the snipers just work so well anyways that you don't have to, you know, try and play this with like as if you're playing with some type of SMG, some type of automatic weapon. You can play sniper in this game and still be effective while it's still balanced enough for other players to be able to get around you and actually harm you. And that's where the stealth elements meet halfway with the, of course, elements such as using a sniper. But of course, this even can be said for games like Battlefield. Everything has a strength and everything has a weakness. And if you can play your weapon to its strengths, you'll be more effective than somebody trying to play their weapons to their strengths. But at the same time, too, your weapon has so many weaknesses that, of course, there's a chance, there's always a chance that you can get killed. <laughs> For example purposes, let's say I decide to live through the aforementioned scenario as a sniper. I can go to the many camping sites and vantage points scattered throughout the map, but before I can comfortably do so, 
What I need are crafting materials. If you've never played The Last of Us, let me clue you in. The game drops you in with some gun, which are guns, attachments, listen ability, and of course the abilities you set up on your character or on your loadout. The aforementioned materials is how you turn the playing field to your own little death trap of hell. <laughs> so after I spawn in typically in a typical fashion, I hit the first box, the immediate box for materials. Afterwards, there are three other boxes I have the option to either hit. Or I can actually go ahead and go set up shop. My goal is to get a nail bomb though. At least one, but maybe two to be comfortable. And at least one health kit. Maybe a Molotov also for reassurance just in case someone gets near me. But I don't truly need that. My immediate choice after hitting the first box will be to go ahead and go set up shop. And try and see if I can be effective for my teammates. Once I actually have melded my nail bomb... I place it somewhere that seems strategic to where the enemy cannot see it as they approach, but at the same time as well that it will go off and kill them if they try and get close to me. Now if I do this effectively, what's going to wind up happening is I will be able to be effective for my team, but at the same time too as the team is made alert to my position, or the opposite team is made alert to my position I should say, of course this is going to lead to them trying to sneak up on me, and because of that bomb I said earlier I will be able to get out of there now the reason why I said a hell kit is because if someone else decides to play sniper and I do wind up getting hit and I get reduced to red health I can always just fucking regroup um go ahead and take cover and actually bandage myself up which will heal me almost if not all the way up and with that being the case I'll be able to change my gameplay style if I so choose or I also will be able to once again use my sniper and be just as effective after scoping out the area and finding out where I was shot from. You see, what makes The Last of Us Faction MP so great to me and so great to so many other people is that there's so much versatility here that you can't get anywhere else. And I mean literally anywhere else. Factions MP is the only multiplayer that I feel like we've ever had to where there's so much here and you would just have to watch the game to see it, but there's so much here to do and there's so much fun to be had. This has been your boy Mozzie, don't forget to do a little A-class gaming and everything you do, don't forget to keep it A-class and I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Peace the heck out. Here goes the-